I'm Patrick Bailey with iQlist.com. Today is December 30th, 2018, and in this video I'll be going over how to automate the making of STL files using open SCAD files and using scripts to call those open SCAD files to automate the process. Okay, recently I created some code to uh, in open SCAD to create chains, and I put that code and the, some of the STL files I made from it up on Thingiverse. It happens to be Thing 328437... Anyway. There it is. Um, and the reason I, I did this, I, I did it not just to create chains, but the chains, you, you can actually put text on it. And the reason I wanted to put text on it, and I covered that in a previous video, was um, this next summer we're having a house built, and as part of that I have to get a loan, and I'm not a big fan of debt, so I was going to make chains to represent our debt. Every chain was going to re represent $1,000 worth of debt. And as we pay down the house, I was going to show my kids, and for me too, to keep track and show how we're paying down the debt and we're cutting the chains of debt. Um, now there's a slight problem with this because uh, I have to make a lot of chains. So I'm not gonna go over exactly how much uh, loan we're gonna take out, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna say it's $250,000. So with that, I need 250 chains. And um, that creates two problems. So one, for the size of chains that I want to make, at most I could probably fit 10 on the bed. I'm actually going to go with five at a time. So the first problem I have is how do you print five at a time and then attach them? I'm not going to go over that in this video. I'm, that's a problem to solve here in the next few weeks and hopefully, or a month. And at that point I'll probably do a video on showing how I'm going to attach them as I print them out. Um, but the next problem I have is that's a lot of chains. A lot of, there's a lot of STL files. So if I was going to do 250 at five apiece, I have to make 50 STL files. And so that's what this video is about. How do I use OpenSCAD with some scripts to automate that process? Now, first, the slow way. Now, if I didn't want to script this out, I could go in here and download uh, my file from Thingiverse. And I set it up and I did a video on it. So the numbers it creates. You know, it creates from one to five, and so here it is, one to five. So I could do this, save the STL file, and then go, you know, six to ten, generate that file, and save it, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so forth. And that would take a, a little bit of time. Um, but it turns out OpenSCAD, uh, you can actually pass variables into it. So what I have done is I have created another STL file, not STL, another OpenSCAD file, let me put it over here, that I actually have put out. I didn't want to get it confused because it's a little bit different. Uh, so I'm not going to put this one on Thingiverse. I put it out on GitHub. And so I'll put links to this in the show notes. There is this one with text tweaked. So I'm over here as a gist, it's chain generator with text tweaked.scad file. And basically all I did is I came down here and where that one and five lie, I changed I changed a variable. So I said, okay, that's going to be now number one, now number two, because we can pass variables into OpenSCAD as we run it. Um, also, I added a rotate chain because I wanted to automatically be rotated in the correct position just to make it easier for me to um, slice it. So I added that in there as well. So all the rest of the code is pretty much the same, number one, number two. Uh, the rotate chain, though, is I did add a rotate in here that rotates the entire thing. So that's the only real changes. But all that's out there. So with that in mind, I have that here. Uh, have that I have that code here, and so now I can run it by hand. So uh, not to get people too confused, I am on a Windows machine, but I am running Sigwin. And so in Sigwin, I'm kind of faking a Linux environment, so I'm running Linux commands. So I'm going to be doing things Linuxy. I will show a little bit on how to do it in uh, in Windows DOS prompt. But for the most part, I'm a, I'm a Linux guy, so I'll be doing linux -y things. But also, this is to inspire you. These scripts, you can go write a script in DOS. Uh, you can write one in, in Bash, or what I'm going to do. There's all kinds of ways you could script this out. And the script should be rather, rather simple. And so I'll share the one that I have. But just to let you know the confusion there, I'm doing it in Linux. Uh, so here, if you're a Linux guy, I can do which OpenSCAD, and I can see there's an OpenSCAD program I can I can call that's locally on my file, so I can actually call this and pass files into it. So as a simple thing, I actually have. Okay, where are we? SCAD. So I have two SCAD 
files here. I have the one that's not tweaked and the one that is tweaked. So I can actually go here and I can say, okay, I'll call the OpenSCAD program and dash O is an output. So I'm gonna make a, a file. So I'll call it test, test chain three dot STL. So it says, hey, run OpenSCAD and for the output, make this locally right where I'm at right now, make a file called test chain three. But then I actually need the code, and so the code is the last thing I put in there. So I'll put in chain generator with text, just SCAD. So that's the old one. So if I run that, it'll run just fine. Might take a few seconds. Okay, there, we're done. So it made the file. And so now if I go over here and look, open up my uh, Prusa control, pull this in, I see there's a test chain three file it made. Now this is still using the old code. So I should see, you know, the one through five, the default in the code. So it generated it just fine, fantastic. Now, the next thing I can do is now I'm gonna run my new program which I could run it too, just like this, and it would work, but I also can run it and I can pass in variables. So I'll run that, and then I can say, where's my cheat sheet here? Dash D, which says, hey, I'm gonna override a variable. So you dash D, and then you put in one variable, and that variable I'm gonna put in here is the num underscore one, which is which is this variable. I'm gonna override that variable. Normally it would be equal to one, but now I can set it to whatever I want. So I'm going to say num1 equals uh, 10 dash d num2 equals oops equals 17 and also I do with dash d I do a rotate chain equals 249 which is the number I came up with so now if I run this it'll actually generate what I want it'll go from 10 oh let me change the name I don't want test chain three I'll call it test chain uh, 10 to 17. So it should make one rotated how I want and from numbers 10 to 17. Now this is another factor why it's nice to script this out so I'm making 50 files. Um, it takes, you know, 30, 40 seconds to run this to make the STL file anyway. So it'd be nice to automate it, push a button, make all 50 as I walk away from the computer or do something else. Okay, so there we go. We got that. Let me double check, make sure it worked. And there is test chains 10 through 17. Drop that on there. And I can see that you did not work. What'd I do? Ah, there we go. See, I called the wrong file. Text chain with text. That is the old one. It overrode those variables, it stuck those variables, variables in there probably, but it doesn't know what they are, so it doesn't do anything with them. That's a good example of a mistake, right? So now I'll run the tweaked one. <laughs> now it should work. There we go. Let me delete that. Now let me drop this in again. And I should see 10. There you go, 10 through 17. So it did exactly what I wanted to and it rotated it. So perfect. So we can over, we can, we can do it on the command line. And once we can do things in the command line, we can start to script them. And so I also wrote a little simple script over here and you can write your own. I wrote, ah, let me back up one second. I, I promised to do this in DOS too, didn't I? So if I open up a DOS prompt and I'm not a DOS guy, I don't like DOS. Uh, what I need to do is I can get into this directory again so that I can see those files. And then over here is where I happen to have my open SCAD program. I can drop that in there because I actually want to call that program. And then I want to, there we go. We'll do dash O. So now I'm doing the same thing, dash, dash O. Uh, dos chain.stl. Not that it's any different, I'm just so I can recognize it. 
dash d uh, num num one equals uh, nine oh, nine and dash d num two equals twelve. And I don't need to rotate it, so I'll just oh didn't like something about that. Da, oh helps to actually put the program in there, right? Uh, so I'll do chain. Uh, this is what I, one of the things I hate about DOS. There we go. Uh, dash D num one equals 11. Dash D num two equals uh, 14. Something about that I didn't like. Oh, not there it goes. Had to give it a second. So now we have the DOS chain. And there we go. So 11 through 14. So that worked just fine. So anyway, there's how you can do it in that and that. So next, I'm going to take that, the fact that you can run it from the command line, and I'm going to focus on Linux. Uh, I'm going to go show the bash script I made and use the bash script to actually automatic, automatically make several STL files all at once. Okay, so now here's my script. So here's up on, on GitHub, and so you can go download load this to the gist. There's two files. There's the morgan underscore chains at sh file. So there's the actual script that will call the OpenSCAD. And there's also the new tweaked OpenSCAD file there too. So you can download both of those. And they're Linux based, so what you would need to do is you'd make the. Uh, if you know Linux, you're fine. If you don't, you might need a little bit of help. You download the same file. You'd make, you do, you can run a which open SCAD to confirm that it can actually see the open SCAD executable file to actually access it. Uh, and then if I look at my, I'll look over my script a little bit. So here you can change this total. Right now, total, it'll only go up to 18. For my example, we want to go to 250. But for now, I'll, I'll lower it to 18, otherwise it's going to take too long to run. Uh, it also makes a directory to put all the ST files in. It talks about how many you do in a set. And what I decided to do was kind of split it up. So I'm going to do five, uh, like one, two, three, four, five, and then do a single one, and then one, two, three, four, five. My idea is I can, as I print that single one, I can attach both ends at the same time. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but I th that's my idea right now. So actually what this does is it makes two kinds of files, one with five, then a one, then five, then one, then five, then one. And so that's how this works. But you can make your own, do whatever you want. Uh, so, But this is how this script works. And I'm not going to go any great detail. I'll just go run it right now. And so over, over here, it actually will make an STL chains folder. And as I run this, it'll actually start to populate it. So I will maybe make this a little smaller. So if I go run this uh, script, you can see it's starting to create the files. Uh, and this is why it's nice to script it, because I think when I ran mine, it took ugh, almost an hour to make all of them. Uh, so it's nice you can push a button and walk away, or you can push a button and do something else while this works in the background. So even making 18 will probably take a couple of minutes here. Okay, there we go. So now I've got all my files and I can start to make my files. I can start to slice them. So I can drop, you know, there's one to five. That should be just a six. And there we are, there's a six. Uh, you know, there's 13 to 17. And so you can see you could do all those one at a time. Now, depending on what you're, pro what you're doing, uh, I did notice there's some, there are some slicers, not proofs of control that I can tell, but there are some slicers out there that you can call via the command line. So you could go call a slicer and you could actually script to slice these automatically, which sounds like a really cool thing to do. Um, I would do that, but um, one, I want to keep it simple. And two, I've noticed some problems. I actually went through, there are some problems with my chain code. I don't know enough to actually fix it where it's okay like 95% of the time, but every so often it will uh, miss a chain. So you'll see it. You'll put it in, in a Prusa control, but it won't be able to slice or render it, so a chain will just be gone. Uh, so I actually went through by hand for all the files I had and generated them by hand so that I could actually see, uh, find the, the mistakes. 
And when I did find the mistakes, actually to fix them, all I did was go through and rerun those particular ones again by hand, and I changed the rotation by one degree. When I changed it by one degree, for some reason that solved it. There was some little weird thing they didn't like. And so it's really cool that you can script and create all this um, create G code just by, by scripting, which sounds like a lot of fun. But in my case, this code's a little iffy. Um, and so there's some, or, you know, hey, you could just, I could have probably automated, automated the slicing, made them all, and then gone back and found the few errors that happened. So either way. But anyway, I just wanted to show that, that um, OpenSCAD is easily scriptable. You can call it to actually run some stuff. And um, you may use Bash, you may use Python. There's a lot of different code things you can use to call it, but go write some code. It's really cool. And especially if you have to automate some processor, you're making a lot of different types of STL files. So OpenSCAD is pretty powerful. Hey, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we we're doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.